I actually found a link the other day which said eight steps to become funnier. So I clicked the link and it said It's like a whole family. Yes, there was lots of food that was eaten in Massachusetts in the United States, but I was also able to write some jokes. I actually wrote about 50 new jokes, knowing that most of them would be pretty terrible. I then read about just under 20 of them to my girlfriend, and then decided about 10 of them, maybe nine of them are any good, and I'm actually going to debut them at my gig tonight at the Cavendish Arms. It's actually... Then Max Turner, I think it's Max Turner, competition starting tonight. I got through the first round last year. I don't think I'll do the same this year. I don't think my act is as good, but uh, we'll give it a go and see what happens. When I went to Qatar, I actually ate camel for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I've got to be honest, I didn't like it. I would actually say that it gave me the, you know, it gave me the... It gave me the shits. <laughs> yeah, it, it gave me the shits. I do like Cash Railways though. Great pens. <laughs> I've even been trying to find ways to improve my comedy writing, and I actually found a link the other day which said eight steps to become funnier. So I clicked the link and it said, you are not authorised to access this page. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much says it all. I've been Richard Parr. Thank you very much. Welcome to Hove, here by the water. A few days after a really good night at the Cavendish Arms for Comedy. I got through, I'm through to the semi-finals. Uh, I didn't think I would. Uh, I thought the gig went quite well. About 50% of them were new jokes and they went pretty well. <laughs> so a little bit more about me. Um, I recently became an uncle. Uh, yeah, thanks. I did nothing for it. <laughs> I thought I was probably about a fourth or fifth best, and we hung around to see if I would go through. And I was the second person named out of three. So it's semi finals next week. Um, it could be Thursday or it could be Wednesday. I'm trying to move it so I can play football. And then the final the following Saturday, keeping it free just in case. But who knows? Hello, back at the Betsy Trotwood in Farringdon. I haven't performed here post-pandemic. I performed here once before, although my name's not on the list on Facebook, but they did say on the website I would be able to perform, so hopefully that will be the case. I'm gonna try the set that I used last week to get through to the semi-finals down at the Cavendish Arms. Will it be a good performance? Let's find out. Yeah, hello there everyone. My name is Richard Parr and I'm a TV producer. Woo! Yeah, now I've got the attention of all the comedians in the room. It's been a while since I've done an immediate reaction to the gig. Uh, it's that classic, 
do a good gig in front of a decent crowd, then do a gig in front of a smaller crowd, and it doesn't feel like it went particularly well. Uh, I put back in the gag about uh, Floyd Money Mayweather, which I'm not sure if it worked. I, I think it, I forgot it <laughs> in the last gig, and maybe that was a good thing. Every single time Mayweather has a big fight or a big win, Joel reposts the picture and crops me out. <laughs> Mayweather beats Manny Pacquiao, he posts the picture and crops me out. Mayweather beats Conor McGregor, he posts the picture, crops me out. Mayweather beats his wife, I post the picture, <laughs> I crop myself out. <laughs> The rest of the set, it took a bit of a downhill. I, I felt, I thought I was clawing it back and then I screwed the last punchline. And I saw this article and it was eight steps to becoming funnier. And when I clicked the link, it said, you do not have access to privilege. You, you're not privileged to access this page or even read. I need to improve for the uh, semi-finals down at the Cavendish Arms later this week. Hopefully I will. When I went to Qatar, I got to try camel. Yeah, didn't like it. Didn't really go down well with me. You could say that camel gave me the, um, uh, gave me the shits. shits. Exactly right, it gave me the shits. Thanks for my punchline. <laughs> During my career, I've, I've got the chance to meet a lot of famous people, a lot of sports stars, like some Raphael Nadal. Hey. <laughs> Despite someone giving my punchline and me not having a very good comeback when that glass smashed, it wasn't a terrible gig, but I didn't make it through to the final. But as I watch this back, I really notice how large I am, how much food I ate over Christmas, clearly showing need to trim down. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Welcome to Stanford Fast Fast BNB's Mr. Richard Carr. Good luck for Alfie, everyone. This is a great night. Yeah, keep it going. Yeah, yeah, I love it, love it. Great crowd tonight. The other day, this guy came up to me and he went, you look like that movie star. Keanu Reeves. Immediately, my girlfriend went, no, don't tell him that. It'll go to his head. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Headliner of your final second section, Richard Paul. This is the second time ever I've been a headline act. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. The first time was when the promoter forgot I was in the room. <laughs> I saw this link uh, on the internet the other day. Uh, bless you. Um, hashtag bless you, sorry. Uh, just walking through East London. Just did a set at Acid with Jesus, which a guy called Andrew runs. First time I've ever done a gig where it's musicians and comedians. Very long gig. I was the headline act. I thought it went okay. I did try and rush through it. And there was one lady, a uh, girl who was very loud, a bit of a heckler all night. And she came up to me at the end and she went, well done. Rough night, but I think you're funny. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought it went okay. So I'm just pacing around my house right now. It's very smoky because uh, I was cooking a steak burger, which uh, just has 
bellowed smoke everywhere. It's been a, a good uh, few days. I was at the uh, Bill Murray yesterday at the comedy writing gym with Rick Keysweater. I'm about to do a gig in Holborn, the old crown. That was the last gig I did. I was actually there two weeks ago. So last year I went to the Open Golf Championship for the very first time. It's very la -di da There's a lot of famous faces yet there. Yet, there was a lot of buzz when I walked into the media center. <laughs> Until they realized I wasn't Dave Grohl. <laughs> I'm going to start a cover band, the Foo Fakers or something like that. I'm going to do a similar set. I'm going to tweak a little bit as, as, as I should, but mainly the jokes are the same. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully well. I recently became an uncle. <laughs> Thanks, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Decent night last night at the Old Crown. I was able to make a lot of my gags and my setups a little bit shorter, which made the set a lot more punchy. However, it meant my set was only about three and a half to four minutes. There's a couple of gags which I want to remove or think of better taglines. I haven't had the chance to do that. Hopefully I can kind of punch it up with my delivery um, as I go here, back at the Cavendish Arms. The other day, this guy came up to me and he said, you look like that movie star, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Immediately my girlfriend said, no, don't tell him that. It'll go to his head. And I was like, me? <laughs> <laughs> so like Bill and Ted, I've had some excellent adventures. <laughs> Like Westlife, I like to get up on a key change. Oh, <laughs> Just wrapped up another writing class here at the Bill Murray. They do it on a Sunday called the Comedy Writing Gym. Some really good exercises today. It was a lot about group work and talking to each other. And we did a section where we spoke for four minutes about what we were wearing. And apparently I come across as very lively, intelligent, but give no air and graces, which is what I, I think I, I like to do. Got a gig shortly uh, this afternoon at the Rose and Crown. Sunday shtick. Hopefully it'll be a good one. Like Westlife, I rise on a key change. Oh, <laughs> I went to Riga and I stayed at Friendly Fun Frank's Hostel. And when I got there, I didn't leave like that gentleman, I stayed. Because <laughs> as the door swung open, the most beautiful Latvian woman said the greatest sentence I've ever heard. Complimentary beer, gentlemen. <laughs> Please give up your next fan, Richard Parr, everyone. <laughs> Thank you.
Like Westlife, I only rise on a key change. <laughs> Just walking back from the Regent pub, nice and spiky there. New material night, in fact. Uh, here in Islington, it's between Islington and Angel. It's like in the middle of a rhombus of a map of anywhere near <laughs> a tube stop or a train stop or anything like that. The gig went pretty well, uh, pretty pleased with it. it. Even though there was only like a dozen people, uh, it was a good audience. I tried my follow up to my keys gag. I know that's ridiculous, <laughs> <laughs> but can you be surprised that? Uh, I do a joke about keys when I've got these locks. <laughs> I'm uh, pretty pleased for a gig on a Monday night, so nice one. Quick update, I've only bloody well and gone and lost that key. Ooh. I knew that was going to happen. What a week it has been. On Saturday, I proposed to my girlfriend and she said yes. <laughs> After asking her dad for permission <laughs> on a toilet seat in a ramen place, long story, I'm sure we'll get to it. We went back to the site of our first date, the infamous Fast and Furious 6 walking tour around London, right in the city by Monument. Got down on one knee and she burst into tears. <laughs> <laughs> which meant yes and we had lots of bubbles and steak and good fun afterwards as we then went to tell all of our families so yeah really really good time then on Tuesday I was back at GMB comedy at the Star of Kings and I did my new opener and it went down very very well Life West Life, I only rise on a key change. <laughs> Ridiculous, I know. <laughs> the compare Kyle loved it, gave me a bit of advice about it. And now I've just been to the gym. A little bit of a circuit action because I have signed up for a half marathon in Hackney in May, which is about eight and a half weeks away. I've got to get into some wedding body <laughs> mode. So we'll see how I do there. But yeah, amazing, amazing week. As I continue my comedy education, I've just finished Colin Jost's excellent audiobook, A Very Punchable Face. It's got some amazing anecdotes from his time as a writer and a performer at Saturday Night Live. And it's a very funny book. So I was thoroughly entertained by that, as I hope to be now as I go off to see Progress Wrestling. <laughs>
Stadium 974, maybe. worker came up to me the other day and the one way to not get me to donate is to open with hey Tarzan <laughs> 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 to be fair I was wearing only a loincloth <laughs> and I did reply with oh! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Trying to be a comedian's hard, isn't it? <laughs> I did actually find a web page the other day and it said eight steps to become a funnier person. And so I clicked on the link and it said, you're not authorised to access this page. <laughs> Happy Friday. Uh, a couple of days ago, I did a gig at GMB Comedy. Went pretty good. I tried my key joke. It went on a little bit too long. The compare Carl had said for me to try it a little bit further and I think it was too much so I'll do less for my gig coming up next but overall pretty pretty good gig I think in general and uh, now off to Zubrano that's why I'm here in Soho that's why there's this big pillow exhibition from coach this is not an ad but I have this gig with Zubrano what I didn't know is it's like a gong gig Basically, I've got to reach five minutes of material and have everyone laughing for five minutes or I get gonged off. I do get two minutes of grace. Hopefully, I'll last longer than two minutes, one second. Oh, oh, and your five minutes begins now. So sorbet makes the golden steak. Well, there's an Indian curry house which now makes the golden popper dom. 24 carrots. When my mate Dave heard that, he said, well, that's a lot of veg. But he did say, it's the one place you do want deli belly. He was like, you know, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. <sighs> <laughs> The other day, a charity worker stopped me in the street. And the one way to not get me to donate is to open with, hey, Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't help that I was wearing only a loincloth. <laughs> or that when I replied with, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> he didn't want my money then. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Cinco de Mayo. Just had some tacos, delicious. Uh, heading off to do a gig tonight in Kentish Town, my hometown. It's literally like this <laughs> 10 minute walk away. Sensational, more commutes like that. I've done quite a bit of comedy recently. 
I was back doing the show at Zebrano on a Friday, which is their gong show. I lasted about a similar length as of last time, three minutes 30, three minutes 20, something like that. Started well, but didn't finish very well. <laughs> Two goals. I post the picture and crop myself out. <laughs> and that's a third goal. I was at a new gig on Monday, Virtue Comedy, over towards Finchley Road, and I won. Joke of the night. Yes, I brought the key joke back, which I left out of the uh, gong show, and it got joke of the night. Like Westline, my only ride on a key change. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how it gets on at the Rose and Crown. Three acts left! Please make a stay! Richard Powell! Like Westlife, I only rise on a key change. <laughs> like Westlife, I only rise on a key change. <laughs> Ridiculous, I know. <laughs> but you shouldn't be surprised to hear a joke about keys from a guy with these locks. <laughs> and some of you can't be surprised because you've seen it before. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome to sunny Hackney. I was actually here three days ago running my first ever official half marathon. I wouldn't say that I uh, ran it race time, but I did complete it. I I'd like to have gone a little bit quicker, but the fact that I completed it for me was a a real win and now I'm off to a gig in Hackney first time ever it's at the comedy lab at the people's tavern I had a good last gig um, just over a week ago in Kentish Town at the uh, Rosen Crown hopefully this will be two out of two actually the one before was all right let's call it three out of three The other day, this guy stopped me in the street and he said, you, you, you look like that movie star. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Immediately, my girlfriend steps in and says, no, don't tell him that. It'll go to his head. And I was like, me? <laughs> Soggy day in Stockwell. So do you know about Salt Bay? You know, Salt Bay, Salt Bay, Salt Bay. We all know about Salt Bay, Salt Bay. <laughs> we all know Salt Bay. Well, we all know Salt Bay for the golden steak. But apparently there's a, a curry house which does the golden popper dog. <laughs> Ooh, 24 carrots. My mate Dave said, that's far too much veg. <laughs> he then said, but it sounds like the one place you actually want deli belly. You know, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching.
We're on our way to Soho to see Troy Hawk. He's the guy from the Greeters Guild. I can't wait, can you wait? No. Can't wait. Please welcome to the stage, we've got Richard Parr. So I've been continuing to do this uh, Judy Carter book and we're now onto the reviewing section. She has a point score system for how you should rate and review your gig. Give yourself five points if you have laughs and applause, a killer joke. Four points for laughs and a smattering of applause. <laughs> Three strong laughs, no applause. <laughs> Two smattering of laughs, one a few giggles, and zero no laughs. And so I've just watched my act that I did the other day at the Rising Star event in Holborn, or Hoban, depending where you're from, or <laughs> if I can ever work out how to pronounce that correctly. I didn't rate anything zero, which is a reflection on a positive crowd. And I think that my jokes and my attitude was good. Overall, it came to 47 points in total. So mainly threes, uh, but it drifted at the end, more twos and ones there. That comes down to nice job. You're ready to progress to pay gigs, but you may want to think about shortening your setups. Well, I'm not sure if I'm ready for pay gigs yet. Maybe surrounded by a million people, I still feel alone. I just want to Like Westlife, I only rise with a key change. Rinse. <laughs> 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 You're right, it's horrible when it goes badly. When it goes well, I feel like I'm flying without wings. <laughs> Welcome to Leighton. I'm going to keep this video relatively short because I don't think I've got much storage left on this phone. Uh, last night I went to a pretty wicked Heineken event for the Women's Euro 2022 tournament. Had lots of fun, lots of free booze. So a little bit 
sore headed today, but I've got my first ever Saturday night gig here in Leighton at Kukula Comedy. It's not that easy to get to. Not really sure where I am. Hopefully I'll get a few chuckles. Now it's time for your penultimate act of the first half. And that would be, he's already set up, he's we end up on a big star of stage and screen and YouTube, Richard Paul. I recently got engaged. Yeah, thank you. Uh, she's American and I wanted to ask her dad for permission, which is great, but she gave me the wrong number. <laughs> so last year I went to the Open Golf Championship in Sandwich Kent. It's very lardy da there. There's a lot of famous faces. But there was a lot of buzz when I entered the media centre. Until I realised I wasn't Dave Grohl. <laughs> had the competition at the Cavendish Arms. Didn't go through, it went okay. Top four out of 10 were to go through. I did forget a line, not that that made a huge difference. Um, disappointed to not get through. I probably was about fifth or sixth best. Uh, could have squeaked in and fourth, but it's what it is. The next night <laughs> we were meant to have a gig at uh, the Rose and Crown just around the corner. That gig went a lot better and was a lot more relaxed. The other day, uh, one of those charity workers tried to get my attention in the street. And the way not to do it, by yelling, Hey, Tarzan! <laughs> <laughs> and then I've had the most amazing Saturday. First, I went to the football exhibition at the Design Museum. That was a surprise. Then I had lunch at the Ivy, which was stunning. At which point my fiance decided to surprise me with one more thing. It wasn't even my birthday, and that was to go and see the mighty Westlife. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, so the last time I was here, I got joke of the night. <laughs> yeah, but I can't tell you it today. <laughs> I'd love to, but I, I'll just explain how it goes. So normally I come on stage, I sit on a stool, and then I change my keys, then I stand, and then I say, like Westlife. I only rise with a key change. Uh, but I can't do it because my girlfriend got herself locked out. <laughs> uh, I am glad I don't have to date anymore though. I was once on uh, the Eurostar and I spent the whole journey chatting up this beautiful girl. But yeah, it was only when we were pulling into Paris that she told me she had a boyfriend. Oh, no. I know, I was shocked. I thought we were going to Brussels. <laughs> My name is Richard Parr and I'm a TV producer. Yeah. Now I've got the attention of all the comedians in the room. <laughs> a TV sports producer. Uh, there, there they go. <laughs> I can't say I'm in the best of moods right now as I go and do nice and spicy. I've just found out in my day job and they're not going to give me an increase in salary. I'm about to go and tell some jokes. We are in a mourning period following the recent death of the Queen. I wonder if any jokes will be spoken about that tonight. But I'm here, I need to get better, I need to continue. I had three good gigs on the trot. Sorry, two. <laughs> Hopefully this is number three. So last year, welcome, welcome. Last year, I went to the uh, Open Golf Championship in Sandwich, Kent. It's very lardy da there. There's a lot of famous faces, but there was a, a lot of buzz when I entered the media center until they realized I wasn't Dave Grohl. <laughs> <laughs> I 
London. It's London, so of course it's pouring with rain. Uh, last night's gig went all right. I wouldn't say it's three out of three good ones, but it, it wasn't too bad. A couple of sentences that I normally say didn't flow as well as possible, a bit like right now, but I'm off to try and get into Lion's Den. Uh, it was my second ever gig. This must be about 102, so 100 gigs later. Let's see if I'm any better. Update two minutes later. Uh, they've already got 10 acts. I missed it by like seconds, probably taking this video. Uh, they've got an opportunity to have acts go in a hat and they'll pull out of the hat and you might get a chance to perform. I'm not sure if I want to do that. I'm gonna go have a beer, I think. All right, just a quick video. This is Central Station where I'm about to perform at Rats for the first time. It's a non-bringer night. That means I don't need to bring someone to perform, which makes my life a lot easier. Let's see if my act goes down well. I'm so glad that I don't have to date anymore. I was once on this Eurostar, and I spent this whole journey talking to this beautiful girl. And it was only when we were getting into Paris that she told me she had a boyfriend. Oh, I was shocked. I thought we were going to Brussels. <laughs> it's not often you perform a gig at a sex dungeon <laughs> yes that's what it was and it didn't help that my first gag the famous key joke i <laughs> couldn't put the key on and then i dropped the key <laughs> and then at the end they put everyone in the actual dungeon and got us to trot out to applause. Or in my case, not very much of it. Richard Paul! Oh. I'm here outside the Rose and Crown. Apparently this is Tom Hiddleston's favourite pub for all you Marvel fans. It's a brand new week and last week's comedy was uh, mixed to say the least. A uh, big nose comedy in Soho didn't go at all well. One of the worst gigs I've had in a long time. Like Westlife, I only rise on a key change. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't go get off on the face. And you can't go on your off. Strap in, Donna. Followed by a gig in Borough, which was much more improved. Yeah, I've got to say, you've been an amazing crowd tonight. Much better than the arseholes I performed to yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be surprised to hear a joke about keys from a guy with these locks. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so my name is Richard Hopefully we can take that form into tonight at Pegasus Comedy at the Rose and Crown. A couple of months ago, this one guy, he, he stopped me in the street and he said, you, you look like that movie star, Keanu Reeves. Immediately my girlfriend yells, no, don't tell him that. It'll go to his head. And I was like, me? No. <laughs> oh, he could tell I've had some excellent adventures. Uh, well, I, 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 I say girlfriend, um, but I recently got engaged. Thank you. Sorry. Um, training for this week's stag. <laughs> Don't worry, Rich. Oh, really struggling over there. Don't worry, Rich. Loads of time. Yeah, that's good. Very narrow. Yeah. John, how are you feeling? Alright, This is uh, nothing compared to Ted. How are you feeling? Dom shit himself. How are you feeling? Fucking Zagreb away. <laughs> Te technically it's Zagreb at home. Yeah! Yeah, 
I've just come back from my stag do. <laughs> and I, I, I love stag do's. They're brilliant. You're with all your friends. And oh, they're, they're, they're amazing until you're the stag. I've never done acid before, but I think if I was to do it, it would be mental to stare at this wall. <laughs> <laughs> It's like uh, one of those, do you remember the magic eyes? Or as I used to call it, like the spec saver cross-eyed con conspiracy. <laughs> and actually, I love your stuff, Mark, but I'll be honest, in your get-up, I, I just couldn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> really enjoyed my night at Heavenly Comedy. As you saw, I tried a few gags about the room and I think they worked pretty well. I, I stumbled a little bit and what you didn't see there is what the comedian before me was wearing which was one of those like camouflage <laughs> tops. So it was quite a funny joke I think but I was pleased with how that went and I've actually just got back from a gig at the Boogaloo, Big Nose Comedy. I once again tried this joke about teachers. Any teachers in the room? Oh, for God's sake, the one time I want to do this joke. <laughs> no bloody teachers. Well, look, my, my, my grand was a teacher, my, uh, my mum was a teacher, and I'm a TV producer. Oh, and now I've got the attention of all the comedians in the room. <laughs> in all honesty, the gig at the Boogaloo went really, really well, and I'm very, very pleased. And I tried a new line about knife crime. I've been in London a, a, a few years now, and, and I think I finally found out what is worse than knife crime. It's the people who want to talk to you about knife crime. <laughs> so that got a, a decent laugh. But what I didn't know from when I last performed there is about a decade ago, there was a duet performance by Chris Martin and Simon Pegg. That's pretty amazing, right? So one could say that I've performed on the same stage as Chris Martin and Simon Pegg, albeit it was in the back room. Does that count? <laughs> I begin by saying that I'm a TV producer. Woo! Yeah, not only to get the attention of the comedians, but because <laughs> we're speaking to Joe all night, we already know I'm a sports TV producer. Yeah. So the comedians don't give a shit at all now. <laughs> One minute. So... <laughs> I've been living in London for about five years now, and I, I finally found out what is worse than knife crime. The people who want to talk to you about knife <laughs> crime. <laughs> My God. It's about 6.20 in the morning. I'm hoping to try and get up around 6 o'clock every day this week to get in a good routine ahead of the wedding. I've got a gym session at 7 o'clock in the morning, a class. But now I'm going to really try and get a new joke for my gig tomorrow night in Kentish Town. Like Westlife, I only rise on a key change. It's <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous, I know. <laughs> but you know, when, when it goes well, I feel like I'm flying without wings. <laughs> I recently got engaged. <laughs> She's American and I wanted to ask her dad for permission. Except she gave me the wrong number. <laughs> so I just imagine there's someone's voicemail in America of me going, uh, Hello, could I please ask your daughter to uh, marry me, please, and thank you, sir. And I imagine, like, kind of later that day in someone like Texas, there's some guy going, Hey, Darlene, there's some British guy. He wants to marry our Desiree. <laughs> Desiree. <laughs> It's a really fun night, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm not sure this dungeon is the best place for us to be spending World Mental Health Week. <laughs> you see, I might be filming this, um, just to, you know, I'm thinking about maybe vlogging my YouTube journey, and I've been learning about uh, YouTube thumbnails. And one of the things which it appears to be in all these thumbnails is people putting, like, wacky faces on. So I'm going to do three wacky faces, you tell me which one you like the most, and we'll use that for the video. <laughs> Wait.
One, two, or three? Three. There we go, thank you very much. You're a great audience. Take care. Last night's gig was very interesting because it was the first time ever that I performed to an audience that included a dog. His name was Stanley and he was one of probably only five real audience members as they were mainly comedians and there were four other humans, although two of them left before I even got to perform. So that was interesting, but then it got a little bit more interesting in my book because after I performed, a comedian went on stage and said, no, I'm not wearing a t-shirt of Richard on it. This is Thor. Yes, a comedian said that I looked like Thor, like Chris Hemsworth. That's amazing. Will my fiance turn up to the wedding today? Yesterday, she rang me and said, Richard, I'm not nervous about marrying you. Now, I never thought she was, but <laughs> that's the first time I've got a little bit of doubt. So I'm about to get ready. Let's hope she turns up. So this is the room where I'm going to get married. And it is a beautiful sunny day. Ooh.
please welcome Greasy Disco Man. This affected some people in the subways. One man in particular was thrown back into the subways. This man was. It was productions like this that led to Richard getting a part in the film Wimbledon. He spoke about his time on the set when, bear with me, when he appeared on the Channel 5 TV quiz show Brain Teaser. He was up against an Oxford University student, Heath. Let's see how he got on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to Brighton. Uh, by the way, if you don't recognise Richard yet, you will in the summer. Richard is going to be uh, a movie star, I'm guessing. Yeah. What are you going to be? Co-star in a Kirsten dance in Wimbledon. Right. When you say co-star, you mean in the crowd? No, I'm just a tourist stroke passing by. Stroke <laughs> passing by, double credit. Loving your work. Richard, he wants to work with you. Well, unfortunately, Richard not only lost all the brain teaser, he got cut from the film Wimbledon. <laughs> Richard also decided to go back to one of his early laughs, comedy. He signed up to a comedy course in Brighton and has been performing at open mic nights ever since. Here is a clip of Richard in action. Look at these arms. Look at the size of these arms. They are massive. They are huge. I could be one of those inflatables outside a car dealership. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.